All right. Hey, we are kicking off uh, notes officially for our um, our microbes unit here with um, starting with probably our most um, familiar microbe, uh, and that would be bacteria. So today we're going to cover all kinds of things um, based on bacteria. It's going to be uh, a lot of introductory level things. Uh, we're we're going to, uh, with our microbes, we tend to try to cover a uh, a lot of different topics and go just a little bit of depth. And I'll keep in mind, you can take a microbiology class um, someday and you can you know spend an entire semester just talking about bacteria. We're going to spend two days. So um, just know that as we're doing, as we're going through this, we're getting an introductory level of bacteria. Some important things to know um, about how they function, how they interact with us as human beings. Um, we already did some questions about bacteria and looking at some differences between them and, and viruses. Um, there is, um, obviously this is just a quote, uh, no need to write this down. Um, microbes are a very interesting part of life. Um, they make up a, a much larger portion of life on earth than you realize. All right, there are trillions of tons of bacteria living on the earth. Um, they're essentially just, just about any place that you can think of that has a surface that has whatever, there's going to be bacteria that's living on it. And so while we tend to focus on the major species on earth, it, the argument could be made that bacteria is the most dominant form of life because it um, covers a vast majority of the planet. With bacteria, we're going to classify them into two domains. And they're actually, we like to classify them as two domains. Um, if you're a strict biologist, you'd be like, ooh, they're not really the same, but um, they are have some similar characteristics um, in that both of these do not have a nucleus. So we're going to spend our time talking about uh, bacteria or eubacteria. Those are the true bacteria. All right, those are E. coli, that's salmonella, those are the, the bacteria that you think about when I mention bacteria. Um, there's another bacteria-like group of organisms called archaea. Um, they're fascinating. We'll get a chance to, we'll talk about them a little bit in our um, kingdoms and, and um, taxonomy unit. Um, but they are, they're like bacteria in that they're single cellular and that they're um, prokaryotes. Um, after that, they really kind of branch off into their own own thing there. So we're going to focus on just bacteria for now. Here's a look at that um, that um, tree of organisms here. Like I said, bacteria makes up this huge portion, archaea. And then the eukaryotes are down here where you see we have, you know, plants, fungi, animals. Those the ones that we all talk about when we talk about um, living things make up mm, a little more than a third of the tree of life. But there's all kinds of different things living around us. How do bacteria produce? If they're so prolific, how is it that they are making copies of themselves and spreading? There are two types. One is binary fission. Um, binary fission is essentially mitosis. In my notes right there, I would write, this is mitosis for bacteria cells. All right, so bacteria goes through um, DNA replication and splits into two identical bacteria. Now, since bacteria are single cellular, they don't grow in size. They just keep mass producing copies of each other. So one turns to two, two turns to four, four turns to eight, eight turns to 16, et cetera. And so you can see how quickly they can reproduce going through that binary fission, which is very similar again to mitosis. The other one is far more interesting. Um, it's not strictly, they're not making copies of themselves during this phase, um, but during conjugation, they can share DNA with other bacteria. Um, so once again, this is something that us as animals, we can't do. Um, we can't, we can't, you know, go down the street and share a gene for, for eye color with our neighbor. We can't share a, a gene for heart structure with our, you know, cousin. Um, our only way to share genetic material as she has animals is by reproducing. Bacteria can actually share chunks of DNA with each other and uh, adopt new genes um, via conjugation. So it's an interesting concept. We're using it for um, genetic research when we're using bacteria as test subjects. 
And we are, um, it's in a more scary way, it's how bacteria are um, passing along certain harmful genes to each other. Here's a look at those two pictures. We got binary fission on the left. This conjugation using a um, a plasmid that's, that's sending the gene over to the new bacteria there. And so notice we're not creating new bacteria cells. It's just we're sharing genetic information with cells that are around us. Not an animal trait, but a bacterial bacterial trait for some bacteria species. Here's the look. If we were in person, we would be doing um, some bacteria sampling. All right, so here's a look at some bacteria um, that has been grown on some auger plates. Uh, this is just if we were to take that single cell of bacteria and let it multiply for 24 to 48 hours, you'd have a mass of millions of cells of bacteria, so much so that we'd be able to see them with the naked eye. So these aren't individual bacteria. Those are mounds of thousands of bacteria. Once again, we're, bacteria is um, all over, all around us. We, we do have this negative connotation that bacteria is bad. Um, there are some bacteria that cause disease and illness and death and food spoilage and do bad things. Uh, we want to try to protect against those. But you have bacteria living on your skin, living in your stomach, that it's covering your food. Um, all of those things that are extremely beneficial to life on Earth and are, are essential for our survival. So bacteria do not need us, but we need them. We're going to start off going over some of these beneficial roles of bacteria. Uh, you don't have to go, you don't have to write all of these down, but uh, it's helpful. Like I said, I'm just going to blitz several ways that we use bacteria in helpful um, ways to society, just to kind of give us an idea. Um, one, we help mine ores. I believe copper sulfate is the substrate. Um, I'll have, to, I'll have to look that one up. Um, but as we're mining for copper, you know, what pennies are made out of and, and pipes, uh, it doesn't just exist in the ground in that form. Uh, we have to give it a bacterial wash that'll help um, eat out the rest of the um, elements that are bonding with that copper. Uh, when you flush the toilet, where does, that, where does that go? That goes to a sewage treatment plant or into a septic system in which bacteria slowly breaks down all of the organic matter in our waste products and eventually turns out clean water as a result. Um, when I was in college, I took microbiology and we took a, a field trip to the weight, uh, sewage treatment plant. It went through, hey, when you flush the toilet, it doesn't just magically disappear. It gets um, sent to um, a particular spot in which bacteria is allowed to break down all the organic materials and the water coming out is actually cleaner than the spring water that um, fed the pipes in the first place. Uh, that In that same vein, we also use bacteria to make a lot of food products, sourdough, dairy, vinegar, anything with alcohol in it. Um, there are bacteria-like organisms that play a huge role in all that production. Right, so that same class, we took a trip to the sewage treatment plant. Then we took a trip to the winery the next week because it was the same kind of organism that is breaking down our fecal matter. A different organism of that family is also um, eating sugar and producing alcohol there. So some beneficial roles there. Some more beneficials in nature, they play a massive role in decomposition. All right, so as things die, we know that they break down. Well, that's not just due to weather and temperature. It's due to the bacteria that's breaking them down. Um, if a, a, uh, an antelope was to die in outer space, that antelope would exist in its form until it ran into something that destroyed it. It would list, it exist in space for billions of years. Um, we don't want that on Earth. We want those dead organic things like leaves and um, the animal droppings and whatnot to break down and those raw materials be available for plants. We can think bacteria for that. Um, we've been using them as um, in the engineering side of things as chemical factories. We're able to program them and make different kinds of medicines, vitamins, industrial enzymes, whether that be um, insulin is a big one there. Um, so we're using them as fact chemical factories. They digest fiber for animals. 
So right now inside your inside your large intestine, you have trillions of bacteria cells that are breaking down your food and and fiber and getting nutrients out of it for you. Um, and it's essential for for life. Um, they're natural gas producers and methane. Last one, and we're using them as a research tool for genetic engineering. We're programming them to clean up toxic chemicals. They play a huge role in fertilizing plants, making medicines and GMOs. So tons of ways that bacteria are beneficial, not just to life on earth, but in specifically to human life there. However, um, here's a look at how they're using bacteria to make insulin. I should say before that, um, insulin would be used by type 1 diabetics that um, don't produce a lot on their own. Um, before that, what they had to do is they would squeeze insulin out of pig pancreases and an extremely wasteful process that would um, slaughter millions of pigs. Um, now they're able to do it with bacteria being the host there. Uh, not everything's beneficial, though. There are some harmful roles of bacteria that we are all aware of. All right. I got a noisy hallway here. Um, some of those harmful roles would be disease. We all know that certain diseases are caused by bacteria, whether that be strep throat or staph infections or food poisoning. Um, there are some bacteria that when they get into your body or in the wrong places, they cause a lot of harm. Same with tooth decay. Uh, you have to brush your teeth every night because of the sugar that is left on them. And if that is allowed to stay on your teeth, then bacteria will start growing on your teeth. They grow on your teeth and then they poop on your teeth. And that acid is what eventually decays the enamel on your teeth there. Um, to gross you out a little bit, that picture on the right is actually bacteria covering a, a, a bristle of a toothbrush down there. So make sure you're taking care of your teeth. Um, BO, BO is usually caused by bacteria on your skin. Right? Food spoilage. Now, if you go into your fridge and something's rotten, uh, it's not that it's the food's gone bad. It's just bacteria start eating it first. So obviously we don't want to eat it as humans, but um, throw it out and the bacteria will finish eating it. Uh, bad breath is usually caused by bacteria uh, living on the back of your tongue. So make sure you're brushing your tongue uh, at night as well. And then uh, the scary one down here, kind of been um, used in the past, thankfully not for a while, as biological weapons, using bacteria as infectious diseases against an opponent, um, et cetera there. So um, just some harmful and beneficial roles. We're all old, old, uh, old um, article now, but We've all heard of different outbreaks of food poisoning and salmonella. It's all bacteria-based there. Uh, lastly, we're going to talk just a little bit about some general shapes of bacteria. If we were to look at them underneath the microscope, then we'll call it uh, good. Um, three general shapes. I have a silly picture is not the best. Uh, we have the spherical shapes, these rod-like shapes, and then these spiral shapes. Um, cocos are the um, cocos, I should say, are the spherical shapes. Bacillus are the rod shapes, and spirillium, that's a nice word for us, are the spiral shapes. So we have those three for different shapes, and then the prefixes we put in front of those tell us what they're made out of. So strepto means that those bacteria are hooking together in chains. Staphylo means they're clustered up, and then diplo means they come in pairs. Um, what this does is it's going to tell us how we, I'm just going to picture again, how we should name our bacteria. So streptobacilli would be a chain of bacilli um, bacteria. Staphylococci would be a cluster of um, cocci viruses or sorry, viruses, bacteria there. So those are a little bit about bacteria naming. All right. Hey, there is our introductory to bacteria and the roles that they play in our ecosystems and in our um, daily lives.